Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036 0703 7681198. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Father, we thank you for a moment of a divine visitation. We thank you because you are the only one that can do this. We bow our head before you. We honor you. We adore you. We give you praise. We give you all adoration. Father, tonight we look up unto you for a divine supply. Let heaven be open unto us, O God. Let the earth hear ye the word of the Lord. We receive help. We pray, Lord, that you hide your servant behind the cross and glorify yourself. Thank you, eternal rock of ages. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and amen. I will be, by the grace of God, speak on extending the frontier through aggressive evangelism. Extending the frontiers through aggressive evangelism. When we see the way the kingdom of darkness is pushing, we see that the power of darkness, they are moving in a very terrific way. Is that the kingdom of darkness have mobilized themselves they are ready to fight the last battle with the kingdom of God. And we begin to discover that the children of the kingdom, the time for us to awake from our sleep have come. The time for us to put on all the armor of God. Because the reason in which God, God has invited us and bring us closer to himself is that in time like this, such a time like this, none of us will be upset on duty. As we are going to look at how do we extend or do we move the kingdom of our father forward, extending the frontiers through aggressive evangelism. When we say frontiers, what do we mean? We simply mean that going beyond the boundary, moving out of your territory into another territory, pushing the battle right to the gate of the enemy. And we have a scripture that gives us all the necessary backing to do that. When you look at Psalm 24, verse 1, the Bible said, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. All the people on the planet earth, they belong to God. All the nations of the world belong to God. So for us to move as the children of God, to push the battle down to the territory of the enemy and beyond is not a crime at all. And that is exactly what God wants us to begin to do without apology. There is no time left again. We can see that there is a great sound of the abundance of rain. God is about to do something on the planet Earth that is going to shook the old nations of the world. And I want to thank God that today, God of heaven is going to give us a divine push. 
wherever you are hearing my voice, I want to say that we don't have enough time, but the little time that God has given to me to minister, I pray that the Holy Spirit will arrest your heart. Before I will read the scripture, I would like to tell you that there is a question that we have not been able to answer. And what is that question? The question can be found in the book of Job chapter 7, verse 17. The question can be found in Psalm chapter 8, verse 4. The question can be found in Psalm 144, verse 3. And the question can also be found in Job chapter 15, verse 14. Looking into your Bible, which I may not be able to begin to read, the Bible says in Job chapter 7, verse 17, what is man? Or what is man that thou should magnify him? And that thou should set your heart upon him. Take note of those two words in Job 7, 17. What is man? What is man that thou, O God, should magnify him and that you should set your heart upon him? In Psalm 8, verse 4, he said, What is man that thou art mindful of him and visited him? In Psalm 1, 4, 4, verse 3, the Bible says, What is man that thou take knowledge of him and make it account of him? You will discover that this six matter here is something that I want you to hear clearly, to magnify, to put a heart upon, to be mindful of, to face it, to take knowledge of, to make account of. I discover that if something is fairly useless, you don't bother yourself to magnify it. You don't bother yourself to be mindful of him, of it. You don't worry yourself to take knowledge of it. Neither do you worry yourself to visit it. And so we are discovering here that the Bible says, what is man that God decided to do this system to him? To visit, to magnify, to be, to, to be mindful of him, to take knowledge of him, to take account of him. That means man to God, no matter how bad they are, no matter how sinful they are, no matter how they look as though they cannot be anything. I am hearing God say, I am taking knowledge of them. I am mindful of them. I am visiting them. And I am also taking account of them. Why? This is a burden that God is raising as we are going to begin to throw challenge on how to go on aggressive mission or evangelism to push the battle to the gate. If God is mindful of man, maybe I should ask you a question very simple. If your earthly father is mindful of something, he takes knowledge of something, he visits that very thing, he always gives account of that thing, he magnifies that thing, and you are a son, and you don't care about that thing. What does that mean? It simply means you are not a son but a bastard. If God is so mindful of man and take knowledge of man, then it is our duty as the children of the kingdom to partner with God. How should we partner with God in this business? Each and every one of us that have been called into his kingdom, we must be about his business. I'll be taking one man in the Bible as our case study 
the fire I will throw I will throw the net into the sea and then push in and pull in the fish that is coming to come into the kingdom of God. We'll be taking the case of a man in the Bible. Yesterday when our senior brother Brock Billy was speaking, I was listening carefully and was taking a candle from Genesis. He started and was going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And when he gets to chapter nine, he stopped and he jumped to chapter 11. He skipped chapter 10. I said, is it coincident? What is happening? And the Lord said, I am the one that have, that have programmed this thing. Where I want my servant to go is where he's going, and where I want you to go is where you will go. I have it in mind that we're going to take the, the case of a man called Nimrod as our illustration for this message. And this story can be found in that Genesis chapter 10. Now, first, I want us to look at where did Nimrod come from? Can we look at Genesis 10, verse 1? Now, these are the generation of the sons of Noah, Shem, Am, and Jephthah. And unto them were sons born after the flood. Can you go with me to verse 8 quickly of Genesis 10, verse 8? And which began, begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. Verse 10. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Let me stop in that place. We saw what happened after the flood that the Bible said, Noah find grace before God. And God decided to establish his covenant with Noah again. But something happened that immediately after the flood, please, we may not have time to be reading, but I know I can depend on your Bible knowledge wherever you are. That the Bible say that Noah planted a fine yard and he drank and he got drunk and he stripped himself naked. Please listen carefully. What I want to bring out is that why should the numeral we are talking about today why should be this man we are using as our case study today? Numero is a great gun shy of Mr. Ham. Numero was not born, was not, I mean, sorry, was not alive when this incident happened. The Bible says, when Baba Noah got up from his wine, when I was look at it, he did not say he got up from his sleep, he got up from his wine. And he say you have noticed what Ham did. What is it that Ham did? You are a father. You go and drink. And you go in and you save yourself naked. I, I don't know the way we have been talking about Ham that is a bad man. I don't think Ham deliberately go and look at the nakedness of his father. You have the right to enter into your father's house. This young man just want to enter with confidence that this is my father's room. And suddenly he saw his father naked. And if you read that Bible fairly closely, this young man did not go into the public to announce to the public. He went to his two brother and he told them, say, our father is naked inside. What were Ram's cause in this matter? And when this man wake up from his wine, he caught three of them, and he started raining cause on this young man. He said, the cause that he rained, when you look at it very well, I have never seen a man cause a man like that in my life. He said, Ham, you see my nakedness? A servant of a servant you shall be. Listen, a servant of a servant you will be all the days of your life. And that cause, heaven hear it. Listen to me, Ephraim had it. 
And what happened? Ham accepted. But later, Ham began to discover that can he continue in this course? I believe that this man might have been thinking, what type of cause is this? The Bible say, when you look at your scripture, when he give birth, then out of his own child, brother Nimrod came out. And the Bible say, this young man is a, he's become, he become, he become mighty on the earth. And the scripture say, he become a, a mighty hunter. Listen to me. To extend that the people always use him as a parable. That as Numero, a mighty hunter. Hmm. There is a scripture that we are very, very familiar with in the Bible. I will quote it. I will not read it. Where Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, when he went to the, to, to the sea of Galilee and he saw the fishermen, he called Peter. Say, Peter, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their net, they left their boat, they follow him. We are fairly familiar with that. But there is another scripture that I want to read now that many of us are not too familiar with it. And that can be found in the book of Jeremiah chapter 16. Jeremiah chapter 16. Verse 16 say, Behold, I will send for many fishers, says the Lord, and they shall feast them, fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the host of the rock. Now, because God is so mindful of man, before, because God doesn't want man to get lost completely. And I begin to find out why is God so passionate about man? Because if we don't carry the same understanding with God, the issue God is raising here tonight, you will look it very light. Why is it that God will not let man go? If you look at before we come to numerous story, numerous story, if you look at Luke chapter 19, verse 10, do we hear what the Bible says? Jesus, that this, the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Now, in that scripture, please, in Luke 19, 10, when the Bible says the Son of Man came, that means when our head of brother Bogula was explaining how God had been bearing with man, how God had been enduring with man, well, they will fall, he will come again, he will bring them back. In fact, some of us, if we are God, after the flood, after the flood, that will be the end. But God is so mindful of man. He's so concerned about man. And the Bible says, the son of man came. I think for that purpose, the son of man came to come and seek that which is Lord. Now listen to me. When I read that Bible, my own understanding go beyond that Jesus has come to seek for man. The Holy Spirit made me to understand. Because when the Bible used that, which was lost. When you use English, that, which was lost. I don't think it's just simply talking about the man that is lost. There's something that was lost. That says, you that, which was lost. He didn't say the son of God, of your people who are lost, or Adam that is lost. He said that, which was lost. Then when I now look at the scripture, I discover what Jesus meant. And I also discover why God will not allow man go. No matter what the devil is going to do, God wants to redeem man. Why? Remember, when God created Adam in the garden, he molded the body with ordinary dust. We are familiar with that, with clay. If after God has molded the body and God went somewhere, and before he come back, the devil came and carried that body away, God should have not worried. But look at what God did. God breathed into the nostrils of man 
the breath of God, the life of God was imparted into that body. And when the devil came and he deceived man, man walked out. So that which God was really looking for is not the carcass. It's not the body. It's not the clay. If it is the clay that the devil carry away, there's a lot of clay. God, we gather another, another one. But God has impacted his life, his spirit in man. And for man to go and serve the devil with that which belongs to him. He said, no, I will do all that lies in my power to redeem man back. That is why he's so mindful of man. That is why he will not let you go. Adam did not walk out from the garden just like that. He carried the breath of life. They are not more active. Satan make it more, it's no, it's no more active, it's no more functioning, but right inside is dead. <laughs> it's dead. And so when God discovered that Satan has stolen this man away with my life inside, he said, no, I will find man back, I will evacuate that life that was there that the devil has scattered, and I will put in another new life so that I can fulfill my original purpose in creating him. What is man that you not allow man to go? Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, wherever you are on the planet Earth and you are hearing my voice, all what God wants us to do in this MLF is looking for those who are going to partner with him to seek men wherever they are. Now, when you call Peter, I will make you features of men. We are familiar with that. We study that. We teach. But now he said, he said, after that, listen to your scripture in, in, in Jeremiah 16. He said, after that, I will send for an hunter. It's like men have begun to turn away from fish to become wild animal. It's like men. They have become so wild. They say, if the fisherman cannot catch you, the hunter will catch you. And the Bible says, this hunter that God is preparing, which I believe is going to raise thousands of hunters after this message. You are going to become an hunter for God. Hallelujah. You will become an hunter for God. Look at the assignment. He said, this hunter, they will fetch them out from the mountain. <laughs> They will drag them out from the hole. If it is the hole of a sand, it's a simple job. But it is the hole of a rock. If you want to answer today to become an hunter, the anointing to dig rock, to bring men out, he will be released on you in the name of Jesus. The anointing to break through the frontier. He said, they will be hiding inside the hole. I don't know, I don't know. Have we ever go into the bush and go and dig a hole where you want to catch something like rabbit? I have witnessed them, you would, they would be digging and digging and digging. They are looking for what? Maybe grasshopper or maybe just a little bush animal. And all of them will be digging. They will carry wood. So we stand around, say, be careful, you may pass that place, be careful, and go and be digging. What are they digging for? Animal to be eat. God says, okay, you will no more dig for animal. You are known to begin to dig for the source of men. Men are so clever that they are now staying in a place where you cannot easily them. You cannot easily locate them. They are hiding inside the rock. Our mission shall learn today is that every one of us that are ready to partner with God gets ready for such anointing that we will break through the frontier, go beyond the boundary. He says, any man asks you, why are you doing that? Simply say, he that created the heaven and the earth, me, is in need of them. Who are the people that God is looking for? This man must be militant. This man must not depend on the, on the past glory. This man must be men and women who will not depend on the past glory or past testimony. This man and woman must be so militant that they will say, if I perish, I perish. And for you to know, listen carefully, friend, in that Jeremiah chapter 16, 
Verse 16, for you to know, he's not talking about animal. Look at verse 17. For my eyes are upon all their ways. <laughs> they are not eat from my faith. Can you imagine that? Even though they enter inside the rock, God said they are not hidden from my faith. Neither is their iniquity hid from me. So that showed that that show that is talking about you, mommy. The hunter, we thank God for Nimrod. When we begin to look at this life of this man, the man said, Me, I heard that my grandfather was caused by my great grandfather. Not me. That cause will not be upon me. I am going to be a kingdom builder. I am going to establish a kingdom. The Bible says in the scripture, if you look at it very well, that the Bible says the beginning, listen, the beginning of his kingdom was where? Babel. Now listen, listen, listen. When the Bible says the beginning of his kingdom, I say, ah, then if this is the beginning of the kingdom of Nimrod, then what is it trying to become? Because according to the scripture, if you read this word, it was in that Babel, the people started making such a, a great attempt to build a tower that will reach heaven. That is the city that Mr. Nim Nimrod established. His kingdom began to extend. He went to establish Nineveh. And you know what God said about Nineveh. He said, that great city, the population of Nineveh then was more than 120,000 human beings. Nimrod went to establish it. Listen to me. God is tired of the people that see it and begin to, begin to celebrate the little. God is tired of those who will not push the battle to the gate. The Bible says, the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Mm. Now, please, please, listen to me, sir. Listen to me, man, wherever you are. I don't have enough time to begin to say, let's go to there, let's go and read this, let's go and read that, let's go and read that. But I want to tell you, please, I want to tell you that God has decided not to give up on a man. But what he's going to do this afternoon is simply he wants to look for people that will partner with him. If your father is so concerned about something and you are not care, you are not concerned, then you are not a son, but a bastard. If your father says, my son, my daughter, I am mindful of this. I always visit this thing. I always take knowledge of this thing. I always magnify this thing. I cannot do without this thing. And you say, well, what is this? What is the big deal about? What about are you worrying yourself? You are not, you are not, you are not a correct child. Everyone that is hearing my voice, on the planet earth, if you are born and born again and you are born to fulfill the purpose of God, God is saying, I will not give up on men. And I'm looking for people who will partner with me in this MLR 2020. I'm looking for people that I'm going to endow with anointing of Nimrod. I'm looking for people who will go beyond the boundary. <laughs> I'm looking for people who will never take little for an answer. May God make you one of such people in the mighty name of Jesus. We discover that when God was dealing with Numerod, sometimes when you look at this story, you bring negative thing, negative, negative thing about it. But can I say this now? That many of us, wherever we are, the reason why we are completely paralyzed is because there is a belief. And what is that belief? Is that you are under cause. You cannot be anything. But my Bible says in the book of Galatians that Christ has been made a cause for us. But the Bible says, cause is upon him that is hung upon the tree. Everyone that have come into the family of God, the cause have been, have, been, have, been, have been lifted up. And so God is saying today that if you can just make up your mind to identify with me in seeking man. Oh, look at that. The son of man have come to seek that which was lost and to save them 
when we are talking about discipleship, what the discipleship is going to do is that that life that the devil has scattered, God wants us to begin to pour another new life into all these men. And I know and I believe that in 2020, God is going to give us all that it takes to ravage the whole land, to subdue the earth with the gospel of the kingdom. Great action will come upon you, brother. Great anointing that you have never experienced before will fall upon you, brother. God will turn you to another man entirely. You will be too hard for Satan to bend, too hard for the demon to touch. You will go beyond where your great, great grandfather has ever reached. God is going to make their heart a firewood and will make your altar fire. If you believe me, wherever you are, the Holy Spirit is saying, your time has come for you to arise, to identify with God in seeking man. Car, car, car. In seeking man. Listen to me. Nimrod. Do you know what Nimrod has done in his, own, in his own day? I will tell you. I will tell you. He become a mighty hunter. A mighty hunter. I think that's where I am going to begin to round up by the grace of God. Now, when you hear that a man is a mighty hunter, then you must agree with me, he's not a man that is looking for cricket. <laughs> he's not a man that is pursuing right up and down. A mighty hunter, they cannot call you a mighty hunter without you been doing something unique which other hunters have not been able to accomplish. What is it? A mighty hunter, listen to me, is the one that can get rid of the wild animal. Wild animal. Do you know why there is a wild human being in your country? Do you know why there is gay, homosexualism, lesbianism, all this uh, thing that the, the people of the world are promoting? Do you know why? You are the one who call them human beings. They are wild animal. And that is why God wants to raise Nimrod. That's why I want to raise you. Many of the men that God raised, they have disappointed God. They have settled down for their belly. They have settled down for what they can gain. <laughs> they have already said, no, I cannot risk my life. I won't allow this wild animal to kill me. But today, I want to beg you, brothers and sisters, as the Holy Spirit is urging you, that why can't you respond to this? Wild animal in South Africa. Wild animal in Ghana. Wild animal in Nigeria. That animal can be on the throne. It's a wild animal. And God is looking for a man who has a sharp arrow. A sharp arrow, one of them in the name of Jesus. I want to beg you, if we don't get up as a, as a mighty hunter, all this wild, wild beast, wild animal, they will finish the nations of the world. You go to USA and see the wild animal, what are they doing? Look at what they are sponsoring wickedness. Look at how they are rejecting righteousness. Look at how they stand against a man that wants to stand with Israel. These are the wild people. These are the people that normally consult demons in the, in the realm of the sea. You cannot know for what reason they have gone. But I believe by the power of the risen Jesus, every wild animal in your nation, they will bow the knee in the name of Jesus Christ. God will bring them to their knee. Before we pray, I would like to charge you today. God is looking for men and women who will say, Lord, endow me with the anointing of Nimrod. I want to begin to go and, and build a kingdom. And remember, there is a promise. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. All power, both in heaven and on earth, have been given unto me. So, therefore, go. Go. You have been sitting so long. Pastor, come out from your office. Bishop, put your cap down. Let us go. 
The wild animal want to finish our nation. It can be president. It can be people in the House of Assembly. It can be writer. It can be the professor in the school. It can be that man. It can be this woman. But as far as they don't have the life of Christ in them, they are wild animal. Time has come for you to respond to this. Time has come to say, Father, if not me, who? For what reason? And for what purpose was I born and born again? If not in a time like this. There is no evangelism in heaven. If you don't do it here, then you miss your place eternity. If you can just say, Lord, here am I, sent me. I don't want to begin to dumble because our brother Amos, he goes, to, he, he, the way he presents it, he shows us the different kind of segment and mission field we can go. That's why I don't want to go into that. But what, how can they go without being sent? That is why God said, I will now send you to go and look for hunter for me. This MLR 2020 is to recruit hunters. Hunter that will be anointed. Hunter that is going to go to fill the whole earth with the pieces of man and woman that God is looking for. Can you please, wherever you are, please, wherever you are, can you just stand on your feet and let us lift up our hand and say, Father, if not me, then who? If not now, when? If not here, where? I am ready. Everything you want to do to equip me, to prepare me, so that I can go and dig this man out of the hole, I receive it. Let us begin to pray, please. Can we begin to pray? Karaba. Bando robo satayenderi la babaya. Imbra bolobo shentayenderi. Wherever you are, begin to receive the anointing of Nimrod. Anointing that will never start with little. <laughs> If not that God has come to put that kingdom down because their motive was not right. My friend, I have never seen such a man who wants to establish such things. If not that God said, these people, hey, hey, who are the generation of Nimrod, if I leave them, they will go far. But we thought we are going to act positively. Nimrod act negatively. And I say, look at Noah. I say, Noah, why do you call that your man? A costless cause shall not call. If you are here, you are hearing me, and you are fearing, and you are so terrified that you are under call. I repeat again, a costless cause shall not call. The cause have been allowed. Jesus Christ has taken it away. He finished it at Calvary. Lift up your face and say, Father, I am free from every bondage. I am free from every power that time me now. I am free from fear and timidity. I am feeling, I am completely I want to step out for you. And as many of us that are praying, let us pray with understanding that God is looking for men and women even now who will say, Lord, anoint me. And if you are among them, can you just close your eyes and as you are lifting up your eyes, say, Lord, please, I am the one you are talking to. Many of us, when you go for evangelism, one, two, three, and they are not responding, we give up. But God said, I will not give up. He said, I will not give up. Many of you, because somebody has disappointed you, you give up. God said, I will not give up. Those who want to identify with God, who will not give up on the source of man, wherever you are, I beg you in the name of the law, begin to step out by faith. Come on, step out by faith. Begin to step out. Yes, yes, yeah, brother. Begin, to, sister, yes, yes, yes. Begin to step out. Just take a boat. Say, Lord, here yeah, I'm. To preach up dry. What is in my heart now is nothing but fear. To open my mouth, I am struggling. Father, rekindle your fire. Yes, yeah, brother, come, come. Yo, begin to come, sister. Move out. Madam, begin to come. Everyone is seeing you. Come on, move, move, move very fast. Move. The anointing you are going to receive is not a sluggish anointing. Move. As you are coming, begin to pray. As you are coming, begin to pray. Begin to pray. Say, Lord, here am I. Sent me. Here am I. Anoint me. No white animal will escape me. Listen, finally, as we are praying, I want to tell you, every correct hunter, they normally carry lamp on their head. Karomo Sheketeria, 
Don't allow the wild animal to see you. Let them see the light of God. Let them see the booming light of Jesus in you. When the light of God is shining on you, all the wild animals will be arrested. The reason why many of our evangelists, many of our pastors, all our leaders, now the enemy have feared the enemy, enemy have feared them. The white bees have finished them. It's because they did not carry the life, which is the light of life. They did not carry the correct life of Jesus. All of you that are coming out, you are going to carry a life that is life, a life that is life. That when you carry the kingdom of darkness, have no, no, no right to challenge you. They will bow. The Goliath will bow. Thank God that you are coming. Oh, yeah, yes, we are still waiting for you. Step out. Come on, step, step out, step out. You step out. Something is about to happen to you today. Step out. Thank God for that man in the house of Jesse. If not so, the Philistines want to use less Israel. David is a no, I will not accept this. I am a shepherd. Every shepherd, you must have the spirit of hunting. Why? Because when any animal wants to carry your sheep, you must be ready to gun it down. Welcome, brother. Welcome. Yes. We are still waiting for some people there before I pray. Now, can you now do what I say you should do? Actually, heaven is ready, ready now to pour oil on you. Can you put, not one hand, put your two hands upon your head. Just put it on your head. I am going to call on God who has sent me to go and recruit you for you. I have nothing to anoint you. <laughs> he, called, he called Moses. He, he said, go and shoot the seventy head and bring them here. I will take from your anointing, I will put on them. So now put your two head, two hands upon your head as I call upon God. Father, the moment we are all waiting for us, come. come. Lord, these are your people who say they want to identify with you in this mission. Who said that if I perish, I perish. Who also said that they need what it takes to dig men from their hole, the hole of occultism, the hole of wickedness, the hole of demonic power, to dig them out. Father, will you release that anointing upon them now? In the name of Jesus, receive the grace to push the battle, to move from knowing to the unknowing, to conquer the earth, to subdue the earth, for the King of kings and for the Lord of law. So shall he be in the mighty name of Jesus.